champion of universal health care, His Excellency, Mayor Rodrigo Roa Duterte, President of the Republic of the Philippines. Kindly sit down. Thank you for your courtesy. Health Secretary Francisco Doque, Climate Change Commission Secretary Emmanuel de Guzman, the honorable members of the health from other Asia Pacific Island countries and other participants who are here with us today, His Excellency Xiao, Ambassador of the People's Republic of China to the Philippines, other distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I have a two-page uh, speech. I can finish this in about the most is two minutes. <laughs> then uh, what do we do? And that is why I propose that I will just read the speech. I do not really give speeches. I want to dialogue sort of uh, with the audience. Uh, Speeches, uh, more than anybody of you here, bores me to death. And so, I, um, I tend to just deliver extemporaneous. You, I ignore, uh, but sometimes, because maybe of the energy that this staff has also, I kind of want to repay their toil Maybe, maybe this, this prepared was done this noon time hurriedly. So after my talk, or would you rather that I will just read my speech and talk to you individually later? Uh, what seems to be the problem, what ails the country, the country of the Philippines? Just like any other country in the world, it is vulnerable. To what? Changes. In, well, number one is because as the carbon footprint, they say, is uh, just too, too many, too, 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 too heavy a load to, for Mother Earth to carry. And so we had this climate change uh, conference. And uh, may I just uh, read it? Uh, so that you'd know that I'm here and I'm with you. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to stand before you today and witness a new partnership that will be forged among regional players in the health sector. We acknowledge the joint efforts of the Department of Health, the Department of Foreign Affairs, the Climate Change Commission, and our private partners for hosting this cross-country conference which explores opportunities for network approach, common markets and sub-regional procurement for goods, drugs, and services. This is a very important event that will enable countries in the Asia Pacific to explore practical solutions to solve shared health problems and overcome common challenges in delivering essential medical services to our peoples. Those of us located in the region, especially to the many island countries like ours, are indeed facing a very complex issue when it comes to health care. Our geography has made it establishing effective health systems that will be very difficult and costly. This vulnerability has become even more pronounced in times of natural disasters and calamities. Therefore, if we are to genuinely secure the welfare of our peoples in the region, a comprehensive and, net, and network approach to delivering health care, employing the latest tools, innovations, techniques, and solutions must be adopted. We must harmonize our people's strategies so we can build responsive, effective, and resilient 
health systems that will not only withstand disaster, but also assist our neighbors in times of need. Indeed, the distance between us will be vast, but if we work together, we can bridge this gap and build a network of cooperation and collaboration. After all, to what end did we make our investment in medicine, logistics, science, and technology? What use would it be if we could not use them to help our fellow men and utilize the resources to enhance our shared humanity? To the delegates, rest assured that you have my full support as you engage in your, with your counterparts and partners in our region and the rest of the world. A much happier place to live in, and together let us make it happen, not just for ourselves, but for the generations to come. Thank you, and uh, before I say my goodbye, uh, we were late in enrolling ourselves in the Commission of Climate Change. I had my doubts if could we ever compel the other nations, especially the big and powerful ones, to also obey the commonality of our determination. Uh, true enough, uh, the United States uh, withdrew from the I don't know why. I really do not, uh, I, I, I have to fathom the reason or even the rationale or rationale of the withdrawal. Uh, is it because it cannot work hand in hand with other nations? Or is it because Trump would like to do it alone? He's my friend and uh, well, of course, I've been invited to the United States uh, several times. But, you know, it's not because of anybody or any place there. It's just something to do with the schedule. It could only be a regional flight, so I can go fly in and fly out in the evening. That would be very easy. But the long haul of 13, 14 hours would kill me. I, I, you know, I used to be, I used to fly when I was young. Uh, many years, uh, I had about accumulated something like 670 hours of flying. But for the life of me, I cannot stand long flights anymore. Uh, even at the recovery of the jet lag, to take me about to, almost two, two to three days to just stretch it out before I can function as a person outside. And so we would like to see, at least my country, uh, that there's really a, something of a good faith on the part of everybody to do his share of the endeavor. There has to be an enterprise in the approach. Business-like, you honor your word. You do not exceed the limits uh, that we have set for ourselves. And uh, the one thing that uh, I said we cannot really control are those countries who are highly industrialized and powerful enough to impose their own will. That's a problem. When they say that, uh, come, we join here because it is good for humanity. And so in the Philippines, historically, traditionally, would always follow the Western uh, uh, approach of a problem. Then they begin counting the carbon footprints, and uh, they were the first to industrialize planet Earth. They went to other countries, exploited the natural resources, particularly the Middle East, lived out with the fat of the land, and when they were there already on top, 
suddenly they decide that it is good for humanity to adopt a climate change. So they are there already high up. And for the starters, uh, uh, if you make it a proportional uh, incremental incre increase in the, in the output of carbon, well, you would say that they have a very great advantage because they started early, not even using the resources of its own, but the, the goods of other countries. Live off the fat of the land with so many soil. So Europe, it's very easy to say, oh, well, uh, you saw Palo because uh, there's a, you know, the typhoon that hit your country, it was caused by this and that, the cooling off the so much evaporation of precipitation from the oceans. We understand that it's very simple, actually. You do not go to the Pacific. You just boil your water in the kettle and you will see how it evaporates. But then, who is uh, strong enough to enforce? Can we now call upon the other countries to say, look, uh, you lower down. Maybe it will greatly affect your DGP. But if you cannot do that, then do not impose on the other nations, the weaker ones, the percentages of carbon dioxide that one is allowed to spew in the air. That's why my, my, my misgiving in my delay to sign. But, uh, you know, I have a God. Do not ever believe in those. But my God is the God that I, we have different images of God, by the way. As many people uh, there are here, we, we have our own image in our mind of what God li really looks like. Me, I think that there's a universal mind controlling the universe. He need not be named God, but at least there is somebody higher than us, controlling the universe or otherwise, with the billions and trillions of planets and stars, we would start to collide with each other. Now, the fact that Mother Earth has reached 4.5 billion years old, seems that uh, my God uh, watches over us. I don't know about the God of the others. My God does not need money, you know, uh, every There are two kinds of uh, taxation here in this planet. The taxation of government and the taxation of the church. And when they begin to ask, where's the money of the people, guys? And I say, it's government's money, it's the people's money. Then I ask the same thing. What happened to the money of the people that's been given in three tranches? That's my basic objection, actually. I thought that we are poor. So the Philippines is not yet in parity with the others. We are pretty hard up and we're trying to catch up. And I said, uh, at this time, let us be very clear on the limitations imposed on each other. I, I hope that uh, uh, our uh, uh, representatives in this uh, commission would really work on something uh, that is uh, fair and fundamentally sound for everybody. Me, I will just uh, go by the developments, and I'm sure that uh, one is that you have to stop this thing about exploding missiles and throwing it to the sea and making a practice. In the process, you kill so many marine lives there. And that would be about a fourth of uh, the world's consumption for five or 10 years. Every time that you explode something that's terrible in uh, 
whatever oceans. So, first is, uh, before anything else, uh, there has to be peace in the world. Uh, the South Korea Peninsula issue has to be resolved. Then uh, we stop uh, egging Iran to go to war. Because then, if that's what will happen, even about a few hundreds of missiles, nuclear, then there's no use of talking about uh, climate change. A nuclear explosion, every time that's being done, eats or erodes the dignity of Earth altogether. And so it behooves upon the leaders of nations uh, who are really there and who can make the change. They can do much. And we appreciate nations who approach the problem with sobriety, understanding, and uh, providing the uh, cooler heads, uh, so to speak. Uh, China is uh, doing its job, and other countries. Uh, but really, uh, I cannot uh, be too generic in my uh, selection because uh, you know how, how it is. I'm sure everybody knows uh, what are the stakes. And so before anything else, let us decide that uh, we avoid war because that would be disaster. I think it would be the end of planet Earth. And the, the residue of a nuclear uh, explosions, even if it's just a lim limited number of even 100, would greatly change the ecosystem of the world. It will result in hunger, the consequences of struggling life. And the problem is uh, if we do not do anything, if nobody listens to the plea of others just to take it, you know, uh, with calm as prose. We are the generation at this time that has to take our children. It is not yet their time. So it, I said it behooves upon us to do everything to avoid all of these troubles. I said, for after all, if there's a nuclear confrontation, of what use would be the issue of climate change to us? And that is really a problem. But I hope that uh, hand in hand with the, the toil of everybody, the burden of talking to this leader and just to keep uh, the world going and not to put it on the edge because it is not good for everybody. We are the parents of a generation that is really expecting of us and it is not yet their time. I don't know what will happen if we do not do anything and how can we characterize the life of the next generation would be. Given the one degree increase uh, in the temperature would be disastrous. Uh, the resources of the oceans are getting to be constricted and very small. Uh, there's not enough fish really to feed everybody and that's the biggest resource of all are really our oceans and our seas. So it is kind of a, an awakening for everybody to address the problem of security and take care of climate change, where you have people there who would be followed by their governments and governments who would honor the agreements entered into, especially if it comes from nations who cannot afford to be extravagant in all, for whatever resource, food and everything, fossil fuel, 
And even if it's an electric car, just the asset that you have to worry about. So there are things that uh, that's really would squarely would be a burden, if at all, to the highly developed nations. That we can only say and plead. Please do it and remember everybody, not just your own interest, not your own hubris to solve the problems of it's supposed to be one global village. What affects you would affect China. What affects China would uh, be a problem also, an issue in Russia, and so on and on and on. First things first is just to decide to stand down, talk sense, uh, remove the barriers. If it's a WTO thing, then let it run its course. We willingly agreed to be members of, uh, I mean, you start to do something which is not really good, and there's a retaliation somewhere, and you begin a competition that would end not only, it, would, it can only end into one thing, this confrontation about trade and everything. In the end, at the end of the day, it's going to be not a competition, but a confrontation. So that we should bear in mind. I hope that the commission that will meet uh, once a year is not good. It is not enough, not even twice a year. Climate change is not a typhoon that visits your country once or twice a year. Climate change is a day-to-day -day problem and a day-to-day -day policy, uh, what ought to be the objective of this country and for that. The first is we have to make a head count. Second is to begin to count what are you entitled to under this law and what would be the immediate consequence or result with the withdrawal of one and how would it affect the others. Can you now force or exact obedience from the other countries if the commission or the, the body itself that would govern try to control the carbon footprints in this planet is in this array? So just much my two cents worth, and that will be the advice that I would give to my representative. If this is going to somewhere, you know, I tell you what, to date I have fired something like 16 three department secretaries, cabinet members, and 16 under secretaries. Why? So much travel. There's a climate change in Africa, and they are there. There's a climate change in New Zealand, and they are there in mass. Then there's a climate change in Tokyo, they are there. Every department sends somebody who does not even know the definition of a climate and how it changes. Uh, how, how is the process done to create a problem for the ecosystem and environment? So all of them, and I mean, I so the list of 11 travels, climate change conferences all over the world, and yet there's nothing, nothing good has come to my country except the expenses of going out and seeing the cities to help with climate change, because whether you like it or not, the typhoon is coming from well, the Philippines is the window of the Pacific Ocean. So if that is how you bullshit with the money, you go. And I said to this day, I've heard a lot. Most of them were my friends who were with me when I was campaigning. And it pains me deeply to see them go. So I have yet yesterday. 
it, it makes me sad, but uh, you know, uh, once and for all we decide uh, we cannot be going to conventions every on. I would insist on one representative from the Cha Climate Change Commission, and I will not allow everybody to go out. You need only one mouth. We are not as rich as uh, France, uh, Great Britain, where you can send a delegation. We can only afford to send one, uh, and maybe if it is to my liking, I might join her uh, in the trip, so that makes two of us no more than. I think there's, a, there's an, a very articulate lady somewhere, but uh, she's outside of the country. They say that, uh, you know, there's a lot of issues against her, but just the same. Uh, I would want to verily, uh, he, your, your, the, the, whoever goes there, will have to pass by my office and uh, we, we will only talk of what to say and how to make demands. You cannot us, you cannot be forever requesting. So this time you demand, we honor our agreement or we go separate ways. You spoil everything there, maybe we will spoil everything. By all means, you want to end this planet, fine. Let us do it. And do it in a hurry so that we will not suffer long. If everybody gets cancer, well, the timetable is after five years, all of us will begin to suffer. And if you cannot bear it, you go to Switzerland. You sign a document there, you lie down, there's a waiver, then you're given a, a bottom. If you like to go ahead, just press it and you do not have to worry about climate change. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Now may we request the President for a photo opportunity in four batches with the health ministers and ambassadors, guests from DOT, DF.